be your own man and take on the world. What's up, everybody? So it is Thursday night. Uh, it's almost 9.30. It has been a very long day. I have literally been at the church all day long, and I'm actually playing at the Amplify Conference, uh, luckily, right here in my area in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And so we're gonna be playing at that tomorrow night and part of Saturday. And so that means I gotta pack these beauties, but they're definitely a load and get all this loaded up in the car tonight and be ready to go. So it's kind of the non-glorious part of, in any context, traveling as a musician, especially a drummer. So let's get it done. All right, so we are done. Let me share with you Probably, I may have a bunch of different nuggets that hopefully can help you throughout this video, but this is probably the one that I'm most proud of. I invest in a hardware uh, case for all of your drum hardware, but let's see if we can get this angle. See if you can see it. This is a golf case for traveling with golf clubs. Drum hardware bags for cymbal stands and hardware, you know, whatever, are super expensive. And so, I just went and bought a golf club traveling case, um, you know, for like flying and stuff like that for like 80 bucks, I think, maybe more than that. Little nugget for you. Don't know why I just did that. So this is a video just about things that I've kind of learned. I'm not the, the greatest drummer in the world. I don't travel the most in the world, but uh, the little bit that God's allowed me to do has taught me a ton of things. You know, when I was first getting into this, I would have loved to have found a YouTube video on how to's with traveling and packing and all kinds of other things that would have been nice to know going into it. So that's kind of my hope for this video is to kind of give some insight into some behind the scenes kind of things and, and what to prepare for if you're traveling or playing um, for a conference, whether you're a drummer or just any kind of a musician. So this is five things um, that you need to know. Try to really screw that up. So this is five important things that you need to know to be a traveling worship musician or for me, a traveling worship drummer. And the first thing is be over prepared. Think through every scenario of what you might need, what issues might come up, uh, what things, you know, with breaking or falling apart, being able to think ahead and prepare for anything and everything that could happen. Finally got everything packed and I'm gonna recheck everything, make sure I got everything I may need and load up, go home, get some rest, and then we'll be ready to go in the morning. What's up, people? So we are, it's about two in the afternoon. You see, I got the whole car loaded and packed down with junk. And as I was thinking, there was some things I, I forgot that pertained to my first point about being over prepared something I completely forgot to mention another area besides gear to be over prepared is in your preparation for songs I cannot stress enough song preparation and having your parts so nailed down that you don't even have to think twice about it which leads me into the second point know your setup being familiar with how to set your stuff up um, how long it's gonna take you, and also in what order you wanna set things up. I can't tell you how many times that I've gotten help that that's, is good, you want help with setup, but because they didn't know the order or how I wanted it set up, it almost cost me more time having to reset things up or reorder things because I didn't have a firm understanding uh, of, of how my process worked and how to explain that to other people. Because when it comes to sound check, you wanna be able to get set up efficiently so that the whole band's not waiting on you. So regardless if you're a drummer, guitar player, whatever, know your setup and know how long it's gonna take you. We're probably about 15, 20 minutes away. And then it'll be go time to load out and set up and get ready for sound check. So here we go. Got a gated entrance. This is definitely a first. Hey, I feel important. 
and I was told to pull around to the loading docks, I feel professional. All right, we're headed in. There's Chelsea. ID passport. We're walking in. First night is tonight, so we already sound checked. Went back, got changed, got something to eat. So now we are on the way in. So hopefully, gonna get some footage of service. Here we go. service um, which leads me to the third thing that you need to know um, and that's to play what you know there are definitely times and opportunities to do new stuff try new stuff play new licks riffs whatever it may be but the middle of a set is not ever the time uh, for that you know, I think as musicians, we have this uh, inherent desire a lot of times to kind of show off and, and show what we can do. But really, as worship musicians, we should be trying to do the opposite. The way we enhance a worship set, the way we enhance music, is by doing it in such a way that the people worshiping while the music is going almost don't even notice us. You, you want to be dis a distractionless element of the band. Smoothness is an enemy to distraction, and that's exactly what we want to be. When you take your instrument so seriously that you are willing to hone your craft and be disciplined enough to play it in a way that is fitting for the song and the situation, to me, that is the real sign of a truly talented and gifted 
musician. Play what you know, and you'll get opportunities. You'll get the gigs. You'll get the moments um, to to play in front of people and play in situations that you never thought you could. So I'm tired. It has been a long day, so we're gonna get some sleep. Wake up in the morning. Be ready to go.